The one thing I think that's really cool about college is that it's a new start. Like, what do I want my life to look like? I've been meeting a lot of new people, which is not something I think I expected. And that's a, like such a feature of college is not knowing what's around the corner. I'd go to like all the events and we went to Austin one weekend, complete chaos for a couple days. And then the workload hit and now I'm drowning. It's just a whole new perspective on controlling your life. Time for laundry, time for homework. I feel like this year I'm constantly running around like from point A to point B, super duper busy. Are you ready for graduation? <laughs> I've done school for 21 years. All of a sudden, one day, I'm not gonna have school anymore. That's kind of weird. I have so many incredible months ahead of me here at TCU, so I don't want to be distracted by the future. This whole situation has given me time to really slow things down. As I've matured and grown and become refined and like have learned, so has TCU with me. Hey everybody, good evening. My name is Brad Thompson and we are so excited tonight to share with you um, a project that we've been four years in the making. Um, as we've talked about um, with our 150, that's uh, a celebration that's been 150 years in the making. Um, and tonight we're gonna share with you a project that's been four years in the making. And that is our class of 2023 documentary called Legacy, stories from the graduating class of 2023. And over the last four years, we've been following a group of students um, and their stories and their journey through TCU, what it's looked like to be a horn frog uh, over the last four years. And a lot has happened in the last four years, for sure. And so we really wanted to create an, op an opportunity for us to just showcase the student experience so that for future horn frogs could look back and see what it was like um, to be a TCU student during this time, but also just to tell the story of some, some really extraordinary students that I'm really excited for y'all get, to get to meet tonight. So. Um, we, as I mentioned, we have followed three students over the last four years. We have two of our students here with us this evening, um, and I'd like to introduce, introduce them to you now. Um, John Freeney uh, was a marketing and entrepreneurship double major from Fort Smith, Arkansas, and he graduated in May of 2023 and is now working at DeVita in Denver. Say hi, John. Hello, everyone. And also we have Tanan Nguyen. Um, she was a Fort, from Fort Worth and graduated also in May with her undergraduate degree in biology. And she's currently attending the Ann Burnett Marriott School of Medicine here in Fort Worth. Um, we're excited that she's still here with us in Fort Worth. Say, say hi to Nan. Hi, everyone. I'm still so glad to be a horn frog, too. So everybody's still a horn frog. We love that. I'm so True. glad to be here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I want to just kind of um, give you all just a chance to, I want people to get to little, know you a little bit before they see the, the documentary. Um, maybe, John, just tell us a little bit about what, this experience was like for you having a camera following you around for four years of college. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was it was an experience. It felt like I was in the office, like to do the, the sitcom for like four the TV years. Show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <What character laughs> like you, doing John? Life. <laughs> yeah, doing normal life, then going to like the rooms, like do interviews and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was like kind of like a little secret at times because I was like. I'd like go to class and have a whole like video crew behind me walking in. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> but um, no, it was, I'm really thankful for the experience. It was really cool um, because now I'm able to like look back and see my growth throughout college. Cause like what, who you are and as a freshman in college is not who you are graduating, like walking across that graduation stage. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really cool to like for y'all to do all the, the heavy lifting of documenting that for me. And I can just sit back and talk and, just kind of look at how far I've come. That's awesome. Tanan, how about for you? What was it like? What was your experience like having a camera following you around for four years? I think from getting that first invite to be a part of something so awesome, it didn't really feel real. I was like probably a prank, but whatever. I'll do this anyways and see where it goes. And I feel like along the way, it was like really casual just to like catch up i feel like Alyssa, tyler austin everyone made us feel so familiar it was just like catching up with a friend every now and then on camera and at the end of all four years when we got to see it or got to like kind of comprehend that it's been a whole four years project it got very emotional i was like this is kind of unreal that we started four years ago it just went by so quick 
And mm -hmm. to see the growth from like day one to now being past college, which didn't feel real in the moment. Um, I think it's just been such a journey and very exciting to see how we've changed along the ways, because while you're going through the journey, you don't really realize exactly what you're looking like. But then in hindsight, you're like, whoa, I really look that silly or like, well, I can't believe I said that sometimes or acted like that. And so I think it's kind of like getting the experience of growth from like a different perspective. Mm -hmm. That's great. And um, Austin just joined us here. Austin, hey, welcome to the, the live stream on this. So Austin was the editor on this production. And what was really neat about kind of where this whole project came from is that we worked with uh, Red Productions here in Fort Worth. Um, with a whole lot of TCU alums involved in the production of this project. So from the very beginning, from our producers, directors, editors, um, and Red Sanders, who's the owner of Red Productions, also a TCU alum. So it was really awesome for them to get to be involved with a project that was so near and dear to our hearts at TCU. So Austin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience working on this project? Yeah, so this has been a project that I've been a part of pretty much my entire time at Red Productions, it feels like. Um, this was one of the you know coming into this project uh, four years ago now man that's that's crazy um that we've been working on this for so long and now we were able to to share this with uh with everyone um it has been a really really neat um experience just seeing it all come together um you know when we start out it's like oh we've got just kind of bits and pieces here um you know we want to tell this really really engaging story we want to tell the story of of John and Tanan and Olivia. And, um, and ultimately we want to tell the story of TCU, right? And so trying to figure out where that story comes from, um, how we piece all of these things together to tell this compelling story was really a fascinating process. Um, and you get 40, four years down the road and you have so much footage, you have so much content that you have to, you're like, man, I wish I could put everything into this documentary. Um, but ultimately, you know, you've got, you gotta, you gotta pick the best pieces and some things get, you know, left on the cutting room floor. Um, but, uh, you know, just kind of taking that journey of, of, of digging into the story and, um, and, and being able to, to craft something that's, that ultimately was, um, you know, really unique because we had, well, as you'll see in the documentary, it, it was quite a journey <laughs> mm -hmm. for various reasons. Um, so it was just, it was a really fascinating experience and I'm really proud to have been part of it. For sure. Yeah. I think what's really interesting about this project is it's not, it's not a, a commercial for TCU because we really followed y'all's stories and your experiences and there's ups and there's downs. There's really hard things. There's really great things. And to me, it's just such a, an honest depiction of your experience in college. I think John Tanon, like when you look back on this, like, do you, do you look back on like this experience fondly? Like you like, you are you happy with kind of like the final product and what are your thoughts as you're, as this kind of rolling out and you're seeing it and people are seeing it like, are you scared? Are you nervous? Like what's been like your feelings as you're, as this is all happening right now? Yeah. Um, it is honestly so fun to look back on because I had fun throughout the entire process and it was really cool to like see, um, everything like Austin and the team has put together because I, I would just go to anywhere on campus they told me to go to and just like talk about my life. And like, I was like, Oh my gosh, like, are they, how are they going to put all this together? Um, even things like I don't even remember what I said, just all put together so beautifully. And I think they really captured just like the story of a TCU student through our three stories really, really well. Mm -hmm. And just really captures our personalities really well. And it's cool to see our personalities kind of like change and evolve over time. Um, and so I honestly, I look over this documentary very, very fondly because I mean, like, TC is a magical place. It, it was the four of the best years of my life. And I feel like I've grown so much because of it. And just, I don't think a lot of people can say that they have a whole documentary that shows that. Um, and so I feel very blessed to have something like this. For sure. How about you, Tanan? This is definitely something I'm super excited to share because TCU's a place I love and I get so enthusiastic to share about so much. Like I feel like anyone I meet, they already know I'm a horn frog within five minutes of meeting me because it just comes up. It's just a big part of who I am today. Um, it's something that's a big part of who I am today because I've seen how I've evolved through just four years in college. And so it's something I'm excited to share because I want to tell them all about my college experience. It's a place I love so much, people I love so much, but at the same time, it's takes some being vulnerable and kind of having to relive those awkward moments, like especially freshman year. Cause I know I did love TCU the first moment I stepped on campus 
but it definitely was a lot of highs and lows, like a lot of homesickness in the beginning, especially like you'll probably see that how much I missed my family. I talked about them um, unrelentlessly. I'm trying to find a good word for that right now, <laughs> but it is a hard like transition to come from like a place of home you love so much. And throughout the whole video, I think you see TCU become more and more of home for all of us and we come, become more comfortable and we love the place more and more every day. And so you can just see like all of us love TC more, the more into it we get. And at the very end, like how bittersweet it is when we finally have to go. For sure. Yeah, I just love it. I love this. I love seeing it through y'all's eyes and just the stories y'all are telling. So why don't we just stop chatting about this? I could ask y'all questions all evening, but let's just, I want everybody to see this and we'll come back at the end of the documentary just to kind of answer some, some follow-up questions. And if there's anything else y'all want to add, um, kind of as you're watching it, things that come to mind, I would love to kind of hear some more of your thoughts about this. So without further ado, um, let's share the documentary with everybody who's watching right now. Education is the foundation of our society. Education can free minds, improve lives, challenge injustices, and build civilizations. At Texas Christian University, we realize that what we are building goes far beyond our own lifetimes. Our culture is built on belonging and connection. We are empowering the people who will shape the future of this world. For 150 years, Horn Frog students have represented the diligence and passion of this great university. To me, the class of 2023 represents what's great about our present, but more importantly, the possibilities for our future. Questions, they're gonna be easy, I promise. You're good, yeah, I'm, I'm not nervous, you're good. Okay, cool. Olivia, you got uh, this! All right, you already got friends. I know, supporters, thank you. <laughs> First question is the easiest. Tell me your name, your major, and your year. I'm Olivia Fannin. I am currently undecided. I believe, though, I want to double major. Is that the question? What year are you? Oh, <laughs> I am 2023. So one thing I think that's really cool about college is that it's a new start. And I think this is the first time in a freshman's life that they are actually able to make their own decisions. Like, what do I want my life to look like? I've been trying to keep myself busy, and I accepted a bid to Beta Theta Pi. So I'm actually going to a meeting at 9.30 tonight. We're learning about how to properly use like silverware and stuff, something I don't know anything about. Yes, etiquette. <laughs> I don't know why they, they wanted me in this, but they chose me, so I accepted. What's the most difficult thing you've had to do so far? Difficult, definitely move away from my family. My siblings and I are like really close. We went to high school together, but hopefully they come here next year. I'm the oldest, but I have two other cousins here. One's a senior and one's a freshman with me. The big change from like seeing my siblings every day at school, it's like, a whole new family here. I'm just like really glad it's been like very welcoming here. I love how like everywhere I go, there's just like a familiar face. And then if there isn't one, then everyone's just so willing to get to know each other, like just make this whole place like a big family. Go ahead and get comfy. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna lay back so it's not like really loud when I move. How you been? Still staying in touch with your family, messing up? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I come home every Sunday and go to Mass with them. So it's been really great seeing them. And I definitely do miss them, but it's not like the homesickness anymore. It's just I miss seeing them every day. But it's like I already have a new family here. And so it's just great. The family's growing. <laughs> Currently, I am part of the crew, which is a student organization that plans weekday events. And so recently I planned um, a nostalgia event and I like ordered a bunch of pairs of Heelys to give away and we had like baby bottle pops and a bunch of stuff from like my generation which was super fun and super cool for to see people get excited about. We actually have the Milton Cup going on 
And I'm sad to say the Basement Boys are winning. Our last event was, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt, but instead of eggs, you find potatoes. And I did not find a single potato, but it's fine. There's one girl on the, um, I think the second floor, she found like 18 potatoes. She went and bought a sack of potatoes from the store and said that she got them. Mm, see, they, they taped faces to it, so they had to find like the faces. So yeah, they really thought it through. They thought through their potato game. What have you been reflecting on the most? What do you feel like has changed the most for you during the course of the semester? I think independence. Back at home, I always had my mom cooking dinner for me. Like every day we would eat dinner at 6.30. It was just so like precise. Like I had a schedule going and now I have to figure it out on my own. Be like time for laundry, time for homework. It's just a whole new perspective on controlling your life and time. For fall break, I went to stay with one of my roommates, Kalunji, and I loved doing that with her. That was super fun. But I was gone for only three days, and I was like, I have to go back. Like, I miss school so much. I do not want the semester to end. I don't know what I'm gonna do for Christmas break, because if I couldn't be away for three days, I don't know how I'm gonna be gone for a month. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Olivia, live from quarantine. <laughs> I am in Chattanooga, Tennessee, my hometown, and I have been here since spring break, since school got canceled. The coronavirus toll is rising in this country. Millions of Americans face being infected. 83 confirmed cases here in Texas have been reported. The second death coming Making the, the decision to send all our students and faculty and staff home really was heartbreaking, gut-wrenching. And I've been here 20 years. I can't remember a more difficult decision, uh, a decision that kept me up at night. Because a big part of TCU is we're all here. It's a culture. It's a community. And then all of a sudden, you say to your community, go home. I was actually on campus when the email went out saying that we would be going online. But at that time, I thought it was coming coming back. So I have a lot of stuff that I still need to pick up. I have no idea how I'm going to pick them up. COVID-19 has impacted everyone in the world. Personally, it impacted my family and I pretty tremendously because we actually got the virus. The one who experienced the symptoms the worst was my dad. And it was actually a really scary time for my family because he was actually sent to the hospital because he had a fever for over a week. I definitely miss TCU. Um, it's, it was really hard adjusting at first, like that first week um, from being back home and knowing I was gonna be here. I, I'm not a fan, honestly. I'm a very people-oriented person. I love being around people, love socializing. My day pretty much revolves around just like talking to people. And so the social distancing is not my thing, but it kind of has to be my thing right now because I have to play my part in flattening the curve. For sure, I definitely miss the community. Community is everything at TCU. Just the spirit of everyone being so loving and kind together is something I'm definitely missing over these weeks and months. Okay, so I'll take you to my study room. This is where I basically spend a good portion of my day, as usual, studying. But this is the room I literally live in now. It is now my study rooms, library slash classroom. And um, I spend a lot of my time in here. Honestly, like it's it's kind of a mess. My sleep schedule is destroyed. I go to, I, like, I fall asleep at like 4 a.m. If I don't have a Zoom class in the, in the morning, I wake up at like, noon or like one but if i do have a zoom class i'd be up by nine so just like all over the place there's not really like a typical day one thing that like motivates me to continue with the quarantine and continue with the safety precautions because i know that as soon as i do that and i can encourage other people to do that um the sooner that everything gets to normal and everyone 
be back where they were and I need to return to TCU with all my friends. So that's one thing that keeps me motivated. Um, I've been pulling pranks with my friends, like virtual pranks. We pranked our friend Tristan first. We all posted on our Instagram stories, like birthday posts, like saying, oh, happy birthday, Tristan. And he actually received so much like feedback from just random people, like his friends that didn't really know when his birthday was. So it was really funny because he was like, guys, what are you doing? Stop. And we didn't stop. <laughs> I got these new Crocs. My sweet friend Amari got them for me for my birthday. Um, my birthday was after spring break, so she mailed them to me with a sweet card and all my friends did, which was so thoughtful and just goes to show how awesome and caring and loving and wonderful my friends are. Um, all the more reasons to miss them. I definitely think that this whole situation has given me time to really slow things down and appreciate everything I have in life, especially my family. I really, I could not complain. I love this extra family time so much. I've definitely missed them this year. And so being home with them is really refreshing and it's just so fun. And the food for sure has been incredible. The food has been incredible every day. I found a lot of comfort through my friends, even though we are spread across the nation. Like we're all battling this together. And so we can all like complain about it together and just experience it together. It's comforting in a way because I know it's not, I'm not, I know I'm not alone in this. TCU has been wonderful about this whole situation. I have friends at schools and they're not nearly as like kind or care so much to keep the community alive. I've always been proud to go to TCU, but I have new, new sense of pride and honor to be a horned frog. I'm mind blown that I am no longer a freshman soon. I'm gonna be a sophomore by the end of next week. So that's really crazy how fast this year came about and turned out. And I'm so excited to come back next semester, hopefully um, to see everyone again and go frogs. Happy summer, everyone. When we came back to campus, uh, that really was in the 20 years I've been here, one of the, my favorite events, in that people were so hungry to see each other again. E even when you would walk across campus, the amount of conversations people had, it was like the first day of freshman year again for everybody. I love being on, back on campus so much. It's been incredible. TC really became a home. And I guess like that separation really made me realize how much like TCU is a home to me. Like I love it so much. I learned a lot because my greatest fear is just being alone. Don't like it. I'm very extroverted. And in isolation, I'm forced to be alone. And so I was able to overcome that fear, understand how to be alone and do things on my own and be independent while still understanding I do have a firm foundation of my friends and family to fall back onto. It was funny because I was like supposed to graduate early and my advisor let me know and I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, and I'm like, I don't, I don't want, I want to graduate in the two years. And he was like, well, do you, like, do you mind me asking why? And I'm like, I just like not prepared to leave this yet, this early yet. In, the converse, in this conversation, like there's a sentiment of like, disappointment maybe, or um, dissatisfaction for the way things are. And despite how crazy this has been, I have been super happy with these past two years. Um, I think a lot of growth has come from it and a lot of like learning. This is how it was supposed to roll and like I'm rolling with it. And like at the end of the day, like I feel grateful and like, where I am now and like where I had to go through to get here. Yes, COVID is a real concern, but I feel like you, there's ways we can get creative that are following CDC guidelines that cultivate community still. Because that's the one weak link that we have during this pandemic is just how do we maintain our relationships and how do we maintain a good community? And I feel like TCU is doing a good job about that. Everyone was figuring out as we were going. And so we didn't know a whole lot about what 
because we have no, no one in our lifetime has ever experienced a pandemic like this. And so it's a learning experience for everyone. And so I'd rather learn it all together than learn it all separately. And he's here too. No way. Yeah, I haven't seen Leah walking into Scott and I ran into them. That's so sweet. Did he, did he say hi? Yeah. Dig in, baby. She's a year below me, but we've known each other ever mm -hmm. since she, yeah. before she even came to TCU. She yeah. was the first person I met at TCU. Yeah. I stayed with her and I was like, oh shoot, this is the place for me. Oh. The rest is history. Her family is like, become my forward family in a way. Oh, no, they love Lloyd. They like, if Tanan sent me a Christmas card this year and she drew me in all of the pictures, like all of her family pictures with little stickers. Yeah, it's a joke. Once yeah. Lauren introduced herself in bio club as yeah. my cousin and a girl actually believed her. <laughs> I was like, why would a small world? I was like, I have over a hundred cousins. That's one of her fun facts or something. Yeah. And I went on and I'm like, my fun fact is I wanted to <laughs> So we just kind of joke about that all the time now. <laughs> this is definitely the nerd house. We're all like STEM majors. But we also call ourselves the convent because we're all Catholic. <laughs> and one of us is actually thinking about becoming a nun, so I was like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, super fun, we pray together, and then we get an adoration, super sweet. This semester is known as like the hardest semester for pre-meds because there's like the hard classes and MCAT studying. MCAT studying probably takes more time than school itself right now because I'm in like three hour classes three times a week and then they have homework on top of that. And then they want us doing like a seven hour practice test every other week and I was like, you're kidding me. I was um, one of the chairmen for the recruitment team of Beta, and so I had to go to like all the events, and we went to Austin one weekend um, for like a recruitment event down there on the lake. Complete chaos for a couple days, and then the workload hit, and now I'm drowning. Oh, am I doing enough? You know, am I getting enough out of my college experience? Last year as a sophomore, I just felt like I was so lame. You know, I went to bed at seven. What happened to freshman year, Olivia, where it'd be like nine o'clock at night and you're like, where am I? What am I doing? You know, because it's like completely absurd. So that's kind of been like revived in me, doing random things with random people. Things I'm looking forward to this semester is like spontaneous stuff. I just feel like this is such a special like TCU moment. Mm -hmm. During the summer, one of my friends, Clara Connor, reached out to me and I was like, hey, how would you like to go to a Pitbull concert? And I was like, okay, yes. And then I joined the group chat and there was already like over a hundred people in the group chat. We were like, bald caps are mandatory. And it was absolutely insane. I wore like just a plain white button up, black pants and a bald cap. So very Miss Worldwide. And I felt like a true celebrity because people were like, oh my God, it's Pitbull. And they like wanted to like, take pictures with me. They were like my autograph. And that was honestly like a highlight of my entire college career. I've been meeting a lot of new people, which is not something I think I expected just because being a junior, you already have sort of like your friends and you kind of know a lot of people. But I think coming out of the COVID year where no one was meeting new people, everyone was just like, Where's everybody? <laughs> so I'm excited to, one, see who else I meet, and two, sort of see how, who I get close with. And that's a, like such a feature of college, is not knowing what's around the corner and uh, how suddenly things can change. There's a neighborhood that I like to walk in. And okay. so I figured I could show you guys that. If I cry also, it's okay. <laughs> um, last semester at the end of October, my dad suddenly died. Losing my dad is like my worst fear come true. Um, my dad and I were really, really close. I'm not like close with anybody else in my family really. And I'm like kind of the black sheep in my family. Um, most of my family didn't really get it. And a lot of times wanted me to change and be different, follow some standard or rule or social norm. But my dad, he, he normally always got it. He was always kind of different. But even if he didn't, he just supported me and just loved me because of it. 
and that's really powerful, I think. Um, because there is like something to say about the academics of sort of progressive ideas, I suppose, but for someone to love and accept you just because they love and accept you, that says a lot. That says a lot. Currently, I am director of administration. One thing that I've really encouraged from our team is intentionality. Part of our mission is, not part, like our whole mission, is make students feel seen and heard. And how we gauge our success for events is if one student comes away and they feel that their day was made better, if they felt heard and seen, that's a su successful event. Um, we don't need any more. And I think that also applies to how our members feel, and so intentionality with our members. Um, how are you doing today? Pretty good. I Thank just you. had my one class. I've kind of pushed what I've called um, intentional time, and that's just taking the leaders of the um, organization, taking time out of their day to invest personally in members instead of just, like, business. When people ask me, like, oh, like, what do you want to do when you graduate? Um, it's so much of this job and the fact that it's constantly changing. Like what my role is depends on what the members of my organization need. And that's ever changing and ever flowing. And that's so fun and that's so cool. And I feel like it just keeps me on my toes and challenges me to um, be better and be a better leader. And by leader, I mean caring for people because um, that's kind of what it means to lead for me, so. Very fun. Um, I can grab the door. Hey. Is it Meredith? Yeah. It might be Meredith. Do you have a camera? Meredith? <laughs> oh, she's hot. Oh, no. Hey, Sarah! Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, it's we, fun. Kelsey, had it's not fun. rented it's out an Airbnb. It was so cute. It was so nice. Perfect location. The day before? Day, no, it was less than 24 hours before. Less than 24 hours before. They canceled yeah, on me. <laughs> and the only place we can find is we're all like <laughs> rush hunting for housing. Um, so I'm making um, waffles because there was this, the like one edible breakfast food they had was um, Texas shaped waffles. But yeah, so I'm making waffles in honor no, of the no, Texas shaped no, waffles no. at La Quinta. Um, and then everyone else is making something that is edible. No. So did y'all know each other before this trip? Yes. Yeah. Olivia a little bit. Oh, I just thought she was like insane. <laughs> so I only like really know Tanad through mutual friends. And so we have never had like, had a real conversation maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like we had conversations, but nothing where like we literally spent the whole weekend together or something like that. And then I actually got to know another like, he's oh, cool. She's a little fun. But there's like depth to your character too. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a there's a corner. We're making you waffles for the quinta. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> as long as it's better than like the churro experiment, I think we'll Oh, it's ready. Uh, a little bird. Hey, looks pretty good. That is done. <laughs> New ones. If you fold it up, then it's like little packages of tinfoil. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, I'll do that in first. <laughs> <laughs> um, when do you go home? Thank you. I. Well, I'll technically go home Saturday morning, but I'll be back for your grad party Saturday night. Oh, so you're just 15 minutes uh, away, and I'm like, why not? Yeah, good, good. Are you ready for graduation? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
I'm doing really good. I feel like this year I'm constantly running around like from point A to point B, super duper busy, but it's all been so great because definitely making time for the people I love so much here because it's crazy that it's the last year. Do you think about your future that much? Um, I think about it a little bit. So I interned at DeVita this past summer in Denver, Colorado, and at the end of the internship, I was given a job offer to come back full time. It's, it is kind of hard to focus on class when you know you have a, a job locked down, but I try not to like live for the future because I have so many incredible months ahead of me here at TCU and I want to make the most of it. And so I don't want to be distracted by the future. I am looking forward to having a semester where I'm not super busy. Like, what do I want to do when there's no one telling me what to do? The other day I was in the kitchen and my sister turns over because I was just studying and she likes to pester me. She goes, I feel like you're going to cry at graduation. And I said, you're right. I feel like I could cry right now just thinking about it. And then I started tearing up <laughs> and like one sad tear rolled down. <laughs> yeah, but it's just been so good and it's just going to still enjoy it until, while it lasts. <laughs> I feel like coming into TCU, I was actually scared to be myself because I was like, oh, the demographics are so different from who I am. I felt like I was just constantly like, so overwhelmed with constantly trying to impress other people and being like, oh, I don't want to be like the weird girl. So I was just so quiet. I was like, better be quiet than be myself, which is not the way to do it. And so I feel like over the years, I've grown into being more confident in myself, my faith, what I stand for, and for the people I stand for, which has made me so much happier. It's funny because sometimes I think about that in actually the context of these interviews. Um, I remember like very vividly freshman year doing the interviews and I'm just like, bah! like I'm just like all over the place, like out of pocket. You never know what I'm going to say. Is this the mic? Yep. Yes. Should I sing? This guy is yes. <laughs> now talking, I'm like, I think much more collected and refined, but like not in bad ways, right? Like I'm still just as like silly and spontaneous and quirky, but it's just more in like a refined way. When I first got here, my focus on my future was so narrow. And so that's one of the things that TCU has done the most for me is open my eyes up to like what I'm actually capable of. And it's just set me up so well for my future. Like that is the reason why I have the opportunity to go to Denver. If I went to a different school, I don't even think that would be in my mind like as a possibility it broadened my, my horizons. That's what makes TCU so special. I noticed that everyone truly grows into their full self here, and they continue to grow after that too, but because they truly appreciate who they are and who the other people are around them, it allows them to enjoy all the moments, the big moments and all the moments in between. This is one, I'm like really happy with how it turned out. Um, that's okay. As I'm in my senior year, my last semester, and it is so fun. At the same time, I am grieving my dad and grief is really hard. At the beginning of this semester, I had sort of like walked through the commons having a like little nostalgic moment and I see all these freshmen around me and they're like so full of life and excited and you just see the like the newness in their eyes and like what will these next four years bring and I rem remember almost crying because almost like envy for my freshman self and how like privileged I felt like I had a dad then that's crazy and I could have just called him anytime and also kind of feeling I think grief for students who would go through a story like mine, because I'm not the only one. I've done school for 21 years. All of a sudden, one day, I'm not gonna have school anymore. Uh, that's kind of weird. I think it'll be sad to leave something that is so structured in the learning process, um, but also 
it is a reminder that like learning does not stop just because you graduate. I think the hardest thing about leaving here is like the safety of it. I kind of see TC as like a cocoon, like it's taught me so much. Just the safety of having like a very solid group of friends already, like leaving the cocoon will kind of be scary. And it'll be sad for sure, because living with my sister and now seeing my brother all the time on campus, has been, he's like our fifth roommate basically, has been so awesome. And just leaving all of this, something I know that's so good and so great, and like kind of having to leave it because it like lets me like take another step further in life. It'll be bittersweet because I love the people here. I've had so many incredible experiences here. This is a second home to me. And so leaving that will be really hard. And so this, it's this like balance of, yes, I know it'll be such a hard thing for me to do, but it'll be such a good thing for me to do because I know I'll grow so much from it. And there's like such a bright future ahead in Denver and so many great opportunities for me out there. Um, and so I'd be foolish not to take hold of it. So it's, it's going to be hard to say goodbye, but I'm excited for what's to come. I think TCU has grown a lot since it first started. Um, in a way that TCU grows its students and the way that I've seen it grow me. We also grow TCU. You know, we have administration and faculty members who I think are a bit more like conscious of like decisions and how those decisions affect people and members of TCU who are loudspoken and want to like advocate for minorities on campus. We're just maturing all together. That feels really true thinking about the 150th year of TCU because as I've matured and grown and become refined and like have learned, so has TCU with me. So I just think that's cool that we're a part of like such a significant year and a marker of that. I hope that what we taught you at Texas Christian University is not just a bunch of fact and figures and things you memorize, but I think more, I hope what we taught you is to love learning and to be inquisitive and ask the questions other people are afraid to ask. That's the mark of a truly educated person. I also wanna to say to you, good luck, God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your life and I know you will and I know you'll be successful. But most of all, I hope that you'll always wanna stay connected with Texas Christian University. Olivia Grace Fannin, cum laude. John Tyler Freeney, magna cum laude, University Honors. Tian Nguyen, summa cum laude, University Honors, Departmental Honors, Biology. Yay. I mean, I've seen this about 150 times and I'm still emotional every time I see it. So <coughs> apologies. Okay. I will compose myself. Here we go. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of follow up with just a few questions for y'all, just for our students. And Austin, I've got a question for you all too. But when you're watching this, I think it's so incredible, particularly at the, the freshman year where you're just like, we're so excited to be here. And then it just stops like at COVID time. And for me, it's it's incredibly jarring, and I know some folks were kind of commenting about that as well. Maybe for John, Tom, what was that like for you? What was that whole experience like? Even looking back on it now, watching this documentary, what what do you remember? What stands out? I think at first I was so excited because of spring break. I was actually skiing with my family. And I was having a good time and I was like, oh my gosh, awesome. Another week of skiing, this is gonna be so fun. And I have a chem test to worry about. That's getting pushed back. This is the best. <laughs> and I don't think I expected it to shut down the entire semester. And at first it was super hard, like thinking about like all these new friends I just made, like kind of just like went away. And I think after that whole extended period of being away from everyone, we realized how much it actually hurt us and our freshman year experience, making those initial connections that you grow on for the next four years. You don't realize what that time took away from you until you come back and you realize these are people you miss so much. Those are like some of the 
biggest, most warm hugs I'd ever had in my life. Just seeing such a familiar face and being so excited to be back home with everyone. I think it made me appreciate TCU even more. And like, it's kind of like morbid to say, but I do think that it did happen for a reason. It allowed me to appreciate TCU for what it was so much more because in the documentary, you saw how homesick I was and like how every day I griped about how I miss my family so much. Still so true. But I think being away from TCU, I realized how much TCU means to me as well. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, for me, I was on campus when we got the email because um, like I went on spring break right when I got back about the email saying, oh, it got extended a week. And I was like, OK, fun. I was still on campus for a little bit, I guess. Um, but then we got the other email saying it's just like for the rest of the semester. And that was not easy news. It was a large pill to swallow because from there on, it felt like it was just like like hit after hit, like I'm getting punched and punched. Um, because like, as you saw, like we all loved our time at TCU. It was hard not to be there for um, what we thought we were going to be there for. Mm -hmm. um, and how everyone was saying, like the upper class were saying like, oh, freshman year was like one of my favorite years at TCU. And it felt like that was robbed. Um, and then like I was supposed to go on like a study abroad trip over the summer through TCU. Obviously that didn't happen either. And so it was initially very tough because it felt like I was losing and losing and losing. But then... I was able to like look on the flip side of it. And I feel like this way, there's like a clear turning point everyone experienced where like, okay, yes, we're losing a lot, but like look at where we're not losing. Like I was able to spend so much time with my family that I um, am now so appreciative of, especially since I don't get to see them every day anymore. Um, and so it really put a lot of things into perspective and made us realize we shouldn't take these things for granted because you never know when they're gonna be stripped from you. And so it was a good learning experience, but it was definitely a tough learning experience. And and but like Kanan said, it it made me appreciate TCU all the more. For sure, yeah. I think it was such a hard experience for everybody, and everybody's trying to figure it out, you know, as we were going through it. And I, and what the chancellor mentioned it too. It's like we have such a rich um, on-campus student experience, and then how do you do that when you can't be on campus with each other. I think that was just such a hard season for so many people, but I do think TC did such an incredible job of just building that community. And as people were coming back, just embracing what that looked like. And it was just such an exciting time like that Chancellor mentioned, but it, even for, as I was looking, thinking back, you know, as we were watching this, it was really hard to make an in-person documentary following people on campus when you couldn't be on campus or following people on campus. So, I mean, Austin, what was that like kind of for y'all, like from a production standpoint, but then also to like, how do you come through four years of footage and create this? I mean, I just don't even, I, don't, I can't even imagine what that's like. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I mean, creating a documentary like this is definitely, um, it's it's a creative, it's definitely a creative team effort, right? Just from, from the filmmaker's perspective, but also from the student's perspective. Um, you know, when, when we got, when we started this documentary, of course, this was in 2019, and um, you know we we thought we were going to have just a, a grand old time making a four year documentary about uh, TCU, and then we got you know a semester into it, and uh, COVID kind of threw a wrench into our plans. So we had to get really creative in terms of how we were going to continue capturing um, the documentary. Um, and so you know, thanks to um, thanks to the students and uh, we were able to, to capture home vlogs, right? And so we got, you see, you saw some of those, um, those vlog entries where John and Don and Olivia were uh, broadcasting from home <laughs> and uh, we were able to kind of capture that. So that was a really, um, thank you all for so much for uh, participating in that, helping us um, capture your story, uh, even in those, even in those tough moments where we weren't able to bring a camera to you. Um, so that was really just kind of neat being able to see that grow into, um, you know, that kind of capturing that creative uh, team effort there um, kind of across the board. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, going back four years later um, and kind of coming through all of the footage, there was um, definitely a, a joint effort on the back end as well. Tyler, our director, um, he did a lot of that kind of, um, you know, going through and, and finding the storylines and finding the, the through lines that were, um, that would kind of, that were, you know, the crossing between all of the, all of the stories that were being told. Um, and so ultimately, you know, kind of putting that together, there was a lot of back and forth between me and Tyler trying to find the, the right story and what order to tell the story in so that it was kind of, you know, a more compelling 
uh, a more compelling watch, but also just a more effective way to tell the story. Uh, because, you know, ultimately we, that's what we were aiming to do. We were telling the story of the students. We're not just making a film, you know, and that's, that's the medium through which it's the story is being told, but we want to tell the stories of the students. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a creative joint effort, um, from everyone involved, not just, not just the filmmakers, uh, but a, a, everyone involved with, with making the documentary. So it was fun. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I think we have, you know, I've said this before, but we have, I think we have the best student experience in the country and we have just some extraordinary students on our campus. And it's just amazing just to get to see kind of just their experience and the stories you know, through y'all's experiences through this documentary, I guess. Kind of as we wrap up, John and Sonata, I, I'm curious, like, if you're, if you could go back to your freshman year self, what is one piece of advice you would give to yourself? Or if there's a first year student at TCU right now watching this, what do you would wish you had known then that maybe you, looking back that you know now? And this is going to be so cheesy, but I think yeah, just enjoy, okay. enjoy it all. <laughs> I feel like in every first day like it happened in high school it happened in college i heard from an upperclassman like enjoy it. it's gonna go by so quick and i was like yeah yeah sure and it really does it goes by so quick and i look back today and it just feels like a whole century ago that i was a freshman in college and in the moment it just felt like that and it was all over and it was just too good to be true and the fact that it's over is so crazy it's so, like definitely enjoy the moments and i feel like something that i kind of struggled with even though like i was so lucky to be close to home and like be able to go home and on campus both. I think like a good way to stay connected on both is being very present while you're there. But at the same time, like call home often because you don't realize how much you miss them until now when I'm really like drowning in like medical school homework. I don't like, it's so easy to like lose track of time and see like you're not as connected because you don't have as much time to reach back home. And so take advantage of like a walk to class to call your parents. So like call your friends from back home. Like I'm trying to do that now and I'm out of college. Still trying to like go by that. But while you're there, just enjoy it while it lasts because it's just so good. Mm, it's good. Yeah, I feel like mine goes along very well with that, Tanan. Because I was gonna say, just like focus on the people. Um, I feel like there were so many times um, I would focus on like myself and focus on like what I have to get done, focus on X, Y, and Z. And I would miss out on so many opportunities because of that. Um, in reality, I need to focus on like, oh, my friend is over here and they need support in this way. Or like, oh, my friends are out going uh, and they invited me to do this. And I need to go say yes to that because that's truly what I'm going to remember at the end of the, day, end of the day, not like how to solve this math problem. Like, uh, well, hopefully I still remember those kind of things too. But um, and like, especially now, since we're all kind of scattered across the nation, like I'm not in my hometown anymore, not in my college town anymore, um, realizing now how important those connections are. And it's like, if I'm walking home, just give someone a phone call. Or if I have free time, just like checking in on someone, because that is where I personally, I feel like a lot of us just get fulfillment from and our enjoyment. And that's what life is about. Um, hmm. And so I wish I realized that sooner on so I could really get that in TCU from such an earlier stage, a more enhanced way. For sure. I love that. So tell me a little bit about, I just got a couple of questions here from some of our folks who are watching. Um, what's your most treasured momentum or, memento or thing that you kept from your time at TCU? Anything that um, stands out? The diploma doesn't count. <laughs> Um, oh. I, oh, go for it. You got it. <laughs> there you go. Um, so junior and senior year of college, I lived off campus. And so I, above my bed, I had all these, like, I had a whole like gallery of pictures and it was just, like any like small or big memory that I just like such brought such joy. I printed off a picture from Walgreens and just like pinned it up. And so mm -hmm. when I like had to move out, I took all those down and I got a photo book. And so it's like a, it's, it's a thick one. Um, and it has all those photos in it and it's similar to this, just like have a, my story at TCU. And so whenever I am feeling like I miss TCU a little bit, I just open it up and flip through and all the memories just come surging back. Um, so I, it's, I love it. That's awesome. How about you, Tanan? 
Something similar, though not cohesive as John's. I really love that idea. Um, mine's a little bit more scattered and random. It's at the top shelf in my closet. I call it my happy box. I got this idea from Lauren Klingman. Actually, she has her own happy box. And I was like, that's such a fun idea. So first off, it started off as like a box where I collected like birthday cards that I got, grad cards, like encouraging notes that I'd open up and read like when I ever needed them. But slowly, like I'm kind of a hoarder. And so it became my junk box. And so I would just throw random stuff I collected in there. And at the end, when I was moving out, I realized like, it's such a happy box. Like I have the medal I got from a bubble run I did freshman year. That's where I met some of my best friends through the four years of college, um, Robert, Luke and Erica. And in there, I also have like some of the rallies how you get from the TCU football games as well. And some old Halloween costumes in there. I have my pit bull um, bald cap still in there as well. Cause I kept it. I was like, this is so sweet. And just little trinkets from like Catholic retreats as well. Like I have a candle in there, just like a whole mess of things all in one box. And I would say my very favorite thing is one of the birthday gifts I got. I think it was for my 21st. My friends did a scrapbook and everyone printed a pictures of all of us together and wrote nice messages in there. And so when I miss them, I love opening it, reading it and just like remembering all the good times. It's awesome. I love that so much. Thanks for sharing that. Well, just as we wrap up, I wanted to thank you all for joining us tonight and just thank you for to our students um, for sharing their stories and being so vulnerable. It's a huge deal. I know it's it does maybe not feel like it, but it's a huge deal to take the time that you all took over the four years to share your story and to be vulnerable with our team. And um, now we all get to kind of watch alongside y'all with that. And awesome. Thank you all for all the hard work that y'all did um, with this whole documentary. And just so as y'all know, we're going to be posting this online on YouTube um, later on tonight and on our 150.tc.edu website. So please feel free to share it. We want as many people to see this as possible. We're just so proud of it and so proud of all the hard work that went into it and just so thankful for y'all spending the time uh, just to sh uh, watch it with us tonight. So thanks again for joining us and go Frogs. Of course, go Frogs.